Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? Both the Saints and the Bengals sit at two and three here as they head into week six. A little bit of desperation for a couple of teams trying to dig themselves out of early holes. If the Bengals get it done, they'll do it on the road. Let's head up to Cincinnati. Ben Baby from uh, ESPN.com who covers the Bengals. We've had to bother this guy more times than we probably ever bothered any opposing media uh, reporter ever just because of all the ties with LSU guys. We appreciate Ben's time as always. Hey, man, welcome back. Thanks for the time as always. How are you? Hey, doing well, Matt. It's, uh, you know, it is. Uh, there are so many ties. I feel like I'm almost a de facto like Louisiana expat at this point with how much I ask uh, Joe and Jamar and these guys about their time down there. But they're definitely looking forward to, to the trip back to the Superdome. Obviously, first time for them since they played in that national championship game in 2020. Man, are you expecting um, – I mean, I know what I'm expecting. I'm curious what you are expecting to see uh, in the Dome on Sunday with respect to, to, to the fans, like how, how much uh, orange and black – there will be in the dome. Yeah, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what kind of reception they get. And I think there's, you know, Joe pointed out today that, you know, there's going to be a lot of people who cheered for them back when they were at LSU. They, they may not necessarily be cheering for them again, but I still think no matter, even if you're a Saints fan who's also an LSU fan, uh, you're, you're going to obviously admire what, what Joe and Jamar and Tyler Shelvin do a degree did for your program. And, and so I, I think there will be a good amount of orange and black. Cincinnati actually does travel pretty well. So, you know, I, I think they're going to have a, a good showing. But, you know, any fans that became fans of just Joe and Jamar over the years, specifically Joe, you know, I would imagine they would turn up for this one and, and make sure that they give them a proper reception. I think you're going to be surprised how much orange and black is in there on uh, on Sunday. I'm, I'm As a Saints fan, I'm worried about it, quite honestly, because I think it's going to neutralize the home field a, a large degree. Um but ultimately, the two teams are going to have to go play the game. What is the general buzz around this team after winning the AFC, starting so slow right now, and suffering a tough loss there on Sunday Night Football? Yeah, you know, I, I think they're really trying to still figure things out, especially on the offensive side of the ball. We saw what teams, uh, you know, experienced last year when they tried to defend Joe and Jamar in one-on-one -on -one situations. It generally did not work out well for them, and Cincinnati had, you know, metrically the most explosive passing attack in the NFL last season, you fast forward to 2022 and teams are playing a lot of exotic looks, basically a lot of soft zone, similar to what Kansas city saw last year in that they're going to try to make the Bengals go all the way down the field and, and really sustain drives, which is, you know, something Cincinnati struggled with in, in 2021 this year, they have done that well to a varying degree, but the, the explosiveness just isn't there. And, and really the efficiency inside the red zone and, and goal-to-go situation is definitely lacking. So Cincinnati will try to uh, fix that starting this week. And why have they struggled to score? I, there's, I, I think it's just the Bengals are still trying to figure out really how this offense works best. You know, you've seen them try a lot of different things. The run game really hasn't been there. That's, that's a main reason why this offense has struggled. You know, they've gotten a lot of light boxes, and, uh, you know, when the, when the numbers suggest when you don't have a lot of defenders in that tackle box in the line of scrimmage, uh, you know, you should run the ball and you should get a lot of favorable run looks. Unfortunately, Joe Mixon just hasn't been able to find those yards that, that, that and, uh, the numbers expect him to. I believe he's one of the worst in the NFL in rushing yards over expectation, according to NFL Next Gen. And, and so, you know, if, if you're a Bengals fan, there is some comfort in how well he ran against Baltimore, how well they sustained drives. But Ultimately, they are going to need to be a lot better than they have been. And, you know, there's been some pressure on, on Zach Taylor, the Bengals coach, as a team's play caller. A lot of fans are wondering if he's the right guy. And then there's going to be a lot of, you know, pressure throughout the rest of the season for this offense to really click because on paper, it seems like they have all the pieces to be a top five offense in the NFL. Oh, what have you done for me lately, man? Just a few months ago in the Super Bowl, and now they're wondering if Zach Taylor should be the play caller, such as life in the NFL, right? Um, the interesting thing, Ben, though, is uh, despite as so much of the the Bengals' offensive struggles have been talking points, the the defense has been, been really good. Um, how much progress have you noticed, or maybe 
areas in particular where they've improved from a year ago to where they are right now? You know, to be honest, I think this defense has been really good for maybe the last couple of years, really towards the back end of last season. When you look at all the guys that they've had in the mix, and I think the really big X factor has been Trey Hendrickson, who had that big year with the Saints. And then when he came to Cincinnati, everybody wondered, me included, goes, are we sure this wasn't just a flash in the pan, a guy who really benefited from playing on the same defensive line as Cam Jordan and, you know, had, was in a good situation, had one good season. Did the Bengals really give this the appropriate guy the right amount of money? And Trey immediately proved everybody long, wrong and showed that 2020 wasn't a fluke, you know, went out and made the Pro Bowl last season and has been very good. I mean, just watching him has been phenomenal. I mean, there was a play last week against Baltimore where he got double teamed on a third down. He shed the double team, went upfield, and, and tripped up Lamar Jackson to get a stop. And it shows you just how good he's been. And he's definitely gotten the attention of opposing offenses like he is one of the best edge rushers. You know, Von Bell, another former Saints, played pretty well for them. You know, he's a guy who's, who's shown a ton of range. And, you know, it's interesting. We just talked to defensive coordinator Lou Anarumo, and he said whenever Bell left New Orleans, that was one of the knocks that they had heard is that, oh, Vaughn is just a box safety, doesn't have the range. And, and Lou said, you know, that hasn't been the case, and we never thought that. You know, he's had three interceptions in the last two games. But, you know, I think the guy who everyone's going to be interested in, we talked about the reception for Joe and Jamar. What's it going to be like for Eli Apple? Uh, who, uh, <laughs> notoriously <laughs> oh, I can, tell, I can tell you that year. one, bro. <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be exceptionally loud for Eli. And Eli is going to eat it up. And, you know, what I find interesting, though, is that, you know, Eli did publicly, you know, go at it with the Saints fans, and it was Eli being Eli. But, you know, I think, you know, when, when I talked to him last year, before all of that, before the postseason, he actually credited, you know, the turnaround in his career with being in New Orleans, you know, being on a team that was, you know, a, a potential defensive pass interference away from winning the Super Bowl or going to the Super Bowl. I think that experience, given what he had dealt with earlier in his career, was really good for him. And now he's playing with a lot of confidence. So, I think Saints fans will be more than thrilled to see what Eli is able to do on Sunday, and I think Eli wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah. Eli Apple tweeted, uh, New Orleans is the dirtiest, smelliest city and has the worst food ever. It's that swine and crawfish that's killing y'all brains. Um, ben, there is one undeniable. Like, this is the easiest one. He will, be, he will be roundly booed, loudly booed, and ridden hard the entire game by Saints fans. Uh, that's that's going to be the most obvious thing that happens uh, Sunday in the Dome. Uh, ben Baby is with us from ESPN.com. He's on Twitter at Ben underscore Baby. He's uh, NFL Nation ri- reporter for, uh, covering the Bengals. Defensively, if there is a deficiency that New Orleans might be able to exploit, where is it? I, I think it's going to be, you know, potentially if they can get anything going in the run game, I think that would be interesting. Maybe the use of Taysom Hill uh, on the edges. That's somewhere where we saw Baltimore have a lot of success with Devin Duvernay and J.K. Dobbins to a certain degree. But Duvernay, they used him in a lot of gadget plays, you know, worked him on the edge. And we'll see if Taysom Hill can be effective in that way. You know, I think the big question for the Saints offense is who's playing receiver for them. We saw the injury report today. So many guys hurt, you know, and I just wonder, you know, are they going to have the receivers necessary on Sunday to test this Bengals defense? And, and this Bengals secondary is pretty good. So, you know, perhaps, you know, finding some, you know, working the field horizontally, seeing what you can get with Taysom, uh, you know, what this quarterback situation is going to look like. There's a lot of X factors on Sunday. So, you know, the Saints offense will have to try to pick their spots to test New Orleans or test, uh, test Cincinnati. What about special teams, Ben? Uh, we know what happened in, in the opening week um, when McPherson's healthy. He's one of the best. Um, what, what, what do we know uh, about special teams with the Bengals? Yeah, I, I think that, you know, it's, you're going, you're going deep in here. You know, the long, long snapping situation, Cal Adamitis, he, he's, he's in for Clark Harris, who, who had an injury, season-ending injury in week one. But McPherson is a uh, one of the best kickers in the league. You saw what he was able to do uh, in the postseason last year, and they have a lot of confidence in him. You know, the, the punting situation is the punting situation uh, with Kevin Huber, who, you know, had an okay week, I think, against Baltimore, but I think he's still their best option. But I think the Bengals feel confident that McPherson can boot it. And, you know, in a dome, where there's going to be no wind, you wonder if his range isn't going to be a little bit longer than it normally is. So that, that might be an interesting factor on Sunday if the game situation presents itself. How bizarre was the kick that went directly over the upright? Yeah, you know, it's funny. We were sitting, uh, I guess, closest to, like on that side of the field where the upright went over, and the Baltimore fans right in front of us 
they all cheered because they thought that McPherson missed it. And it was, and once they, you know, saw the replay and saw that it went over and it was good, that's when they kind of figured it out. But there's still a lot of booing. A lot of people weren't thrilled. And, and that could have been a disaster right there if, if Evan missed that one. But ultimately it didn't matter because Baltimore still won. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, it's a, yeah, it, was a, it was a real moment because people inside the stadium thought that went in. Um, hey, before you go, if, uh, if Cincinnati leaves the Dome on Sunday with a win and evens up their record at 3-3, three and three, how do you think the game goes? That's a good question. I, I think that it, it potentially could be a low-scoring game. I mean, Cincinnati has crushed the under all season, so I, w- I would not, if you're a betting man or a betting person, I would not bet the over in this game, but I have zero confidence that it's going to be a high-scoring affair, especially when you look at what the Saints offense has done and kind of the injury situation over there. I think, you know, Cincinnati, based on what we've seen from other defenses, I I imagine New Orleans will do the same thing, try to make them take everything underneath and have those long, sustained drives, which means it's going to be a pretty, you know, uh, short game in terms of possessions. And, you know, the Bengals' defense has been pretty good. So if Cincinnati is going to win, I think it's going to be one of these where they're going to have to grind it out and, and, and you know, potentially just win. On a, a pre- it's not going to be a pretty game, but right now Cincinnati will take anything he can get. He's on Twitter at Ben underscore baby. Y'all give him a follow. Saints Bengals noon in the Dome on Sunday. Ben, safe travels, man. Great to talk to you as always. We appreciate a couple of minutes. Hey, sounds good. Thank you. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.